to the blue line. Reese grab, high slot, shot down low, same with the rebound, scores! The back attack puts it home on the rebound. Another goal for Max Jansen. Jansen it cuts back, and this time he drops it in, and poked in by Faust on the doorstep. Andy Faust sends it home. For that second one on that save, Shaughnessy, rebound! Shaughnessy with a save! How did he make that save? Oh, Timmy Q that one up and sent it to the North American Hockey League. How did he stop that puck? Here comes Lachenko. Left wing, cross the line. Nice drop pass to Hendrickson. Shot! Scores! Oh, look at that. That's as pretty as it comes. It's the Chill Coaches Show. Rick and Scotty are talking puck with Coach Dagenhart, chill players, and even the opposition on Wednesday nights from Buffalo Wild Wings. It's a 60-game season, and you're playing good competition every night. So we look at every weekend as a new opportunity, and I uh, don't like to get too far ahead of ourselves. We focus on Friday, and we focus on Saturday and take them one at a time. Now, here are two guys that were voted least popular by the Omni Center staff after throwing lucky charms after chill goals on Friday night. Rick McFrankie and Scotty O'Gran. Ah, uh, yes, it's a St. Paddy's Day version of the Chill <laughs> Coaches Show from the Iceberg Fan Deck at the Omni uh. Center. Rick Frankie, Scotty Gran. We have Irish names today because of the St. Paddy's Day feel. Uh, is it uh, A.J. O'Daganhart, Coach A.J. <laughs> O'Daganhart? Uh, Coach is with us here, and uh, it's on the eve of the Junior Chill AAA tryouts tonight, so a busy, busy, busy night for uh, Coach Daganhart here. And uh, it was a great weekend for chill hockey. I mean, we had an absolute blast up in the Empire Development Beaver Builders <laughs> Supply no Studio. Kidding. As you probably heard, maybe too good a time uh, with the uh, – Lucky Charms being thrown, and uh, if, if there's time, we're going to hear the uh, the Jesse Tredinick penalty shot goal call that Scotty put together. It was uh, you you said off the air that uh, you thought it was a pretty good one. Yeah, there's definitely going to be time to play that. It's worth all it. So. Right, all right, <laughs> it's good stuff. Let's first talk about Friday nights and uh, that game because uh, it, you know you get Jesse Tredinick with a penalty shot, and he uh, he capitalizes on it, which was huge. And of course, you know the hometown kid. You know it's kind of nice to score in front of the hometown fans against the top team in the Central Division. You know, they had uh, had clinched that night after winning that game. Uh, I don't even think their broadcaster knew it. Jimmy over there no. from Austin didn't know. But mm -hmm. they've had such a great season, and, you know, they've been such a solid, consistent team. But a great start for the Chill. We outshoot the Austin Bruins in that game, but they're able to get a couple power play goals there in the second period and kind of take control, win that one 5-3. to three. Let's get your take on that game and, and what you found out of that Friday night game that helped you for Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty good hockey game. I actually felt uh, we may have played better on Friday night than Saturday night. I think we got out of the gates really strong. I think uh, uh, obviously the goal by Jesse was huge. I think um, uh, looking, looking at the game, it was pretty much a six-minute span. That was the difference in the hockey game. I think we got, uh, you know, I've talked about it with you guys before. It's got to be a full 60-minute effort every night. And uh, we had a game plan. Our game plan uh, pretty much the last couple weeks has been to keep it simple, advance pucks up the ice, gain the next zone, and uh, don't try to do too much with it. If you got a play entering the zone, you can make the play. If uh, you don't, you're putting the puck in, and we're getting on it in our forecheck. And I think uh, we got off to a good start, like I said. I think we got away from it for probably six minutes there where – uh, I remember two instances, I guess, we were trying to break the puck out of the zone, and we actually had a chance to gain the next zone. We ended up turning the puck back into our own end, ended up turning it over, and before you know it was in our net. And, uh, just little things like that that we got to get better on, uh, lessons that, in my opinion, should have been learned at this point, but we're still learning them. Uh, I think after Friday night's game, we had a nice meeting on Saturday, a very real meeting in the locker room with the guys, and uh, just had a good talk, and basically I went around the room and told the guys, listen I don't know who I'm playing tonight I want to hear from you guys I'm going to sit down with you guys in this locker room and you know what I want to hear you tell me what you what it is you bring to the table what's your role on this team and uh, why should I play you tonight I don't know who I'm sitting yet tell me convince me that you're in the lineup this evening so uh, it went really well I thought I think the guys responded really well leading into the next night then too so yeah, Coach, uh, one thing I think Rick and I would both agree on watching the game is you guys played so well for that on Friday night for the most part. And then, like you said, that full 60 minutes, you kind of got relaxed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they, they Boston just takes advantage of that power play that we know is so lethal. I mean, yeah. they're first in the league for a reason. But in turn, your power play looked pretty impressive as well. So what are you working on with these guys? Because they really seem to have the confidence in that power play unit right now. Well, we've been, I guess, one thing we've been doing a lot more 
more of since I've taken over. There's been a lot more power play practice. We spend probably 40 minutes. And it shows. I, would say I gotta Monday. say, it showed you know, this weekend. It was yeah, no, fantastic. They, I think the puck movement was really good. I think the times when we, you know, maybe struggled to get set up in the zone, we were just a little slow getting on pucks, getting numbers on it when there wasn't clear cut possession in the zone. But yeah, guys are moving the puck well. We got two different units going. One unit's doing an umbrella. One unit's doing sort of a modified box in one and uh, giving two different looks looks to the opposing penalty kill, and I think that's been effective for us. I think I know uh, what he's talking about. I got a video game that tells me. <laughs> that. <Yeah>. That's <laughs> how he nice. knows about the umbrella. No, yeah. I, I think through repetition, though, in practice, uh, like uh, we've been starting out every day basically uh, – Guys, guys have been going five on zero in the zone. Then we go five on two in the zone. Then we go five on three. Then five on four. Then full ice. And just through repetition, I think guys are starting to, you know, see the pattern, see where openings are, and starting to hit them a little bit. So I think it's paid off for us. And yeah, the power play has been doing pretty well as of late. I thought Brady Reesgraf had probably one of his best weekends this season. And and you know, obviously it's been bugging him. Throughout the year, I mean, he's a, he's a talented offensive defenseman, and he was uh, kept with zero on the goal category until this weekend. And then Saturday, he put it, took a big slapper, and he's had so many this year that the goaltenders had just managed to get a piece of. But this one, they didn't get, and it was like two consecutive because uh, before that, uh, Faust had taken a slapper from the point and uh, was deflected by Hunter and on, on one of the two power play goals he yeah. scored. But for Brady to get that goal, how excited was he when he came back to the bench? Yeah, he was definitely excited, and Brady's a guy, uh, you know. I don't even know if I should say this on here, but if you know me at all, I have trouble keeping my mouth shut. But he's a it's quite he's a, a contrast guy. from what he's, we had before. I'll he, tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> he had he had a commitment to Bemidji State. He's actually recently decommitted from Bemidji State. Okay. I think it's something that was weighing on his chest for quite a quite a while here. It was kind of an inevitable thing and just a process that slowly evolved over time. Um, I think getting that decision finally made I think that took a lot of weight off his shoulders and allowed him just to go out and play his game and be himself I think it you know got the monkey off his back and uh, you know he played a really good weekend of hockey I think probably his best weekend of hockey of the entire season to this point so uh, we're looking for big things from him down the stretch he's got a point to prove to college coaches now he uh, you know he's back on the market whether it's a division one or a division three coach now they're able to talk to him so AJ, you made a lot of moves as we, you know, talked about quite a bit on the show, but I think these moves are paying off. I, I watched that second line with Becker and McGing and what they're able to do offensively. Yeah, they're not scoring a ton of goals right now, but they're making plays and they're making teams really have to account for them on the ice. And uh, really, is I mean, when you got these guys, did you know what you were getting right off the bat? I mean, it seems like you know what you're doing when it comes to scouting. Yeah, I, I mean, I did know what I was getting, or at least I hoped I did, um, uh, from just homework that I had done talking to some people and from what I knew from playing those guys, I knew they were good hockey players. So very creative guys offensively. I think they added some much-needed depth up front. Uh, in terms of scoring, yeah, they maybe haven't scored as, as much as I would have hoped, Lots I guess. Lots of opportunities. But yeah, though. tons of opportunities. I think they're, I think they're two guys that uh, – uh, need to learn a little bit that you don't have to be two feet away from the net to shoot and to score. Um, and they maybe get a little, they overhandle the puck occasionally, but they're very creative guys with the puck. They're very high skill level guys and they can make plays. And it's been, uh, they've been very welcome additions to the club and helped us out a lot. So. Uh, Tim Shaughnessy is going to be joining us here in a little bit, chill netminder. And, uh, you know, again, uh, Friday night was a little bit tougher for him. But uh, Saturday night, boy, I tell you what, when when things were getting rough towards the end, you know, they uh, the Austin Bruins, they, they were putting the screws to us. I think it, they outshot us. I think it was 24 to, to 6 or something mm -hmm. like that. And, uh, you know, Shaughnessy was just huge in net from post to post. Uh, the guy just seems to really want to put as much out there as he can here towards the end of the year to, to get those looks and, uh, can you tell us, is there something happening for Timmy, or is he going to tell us? I mean, uh, where is he at with, uh, with the next level? He's had some opportunities. He, uh, I know Michigan Tech's interested in him. Um, I'm not sure if that will pan out or not. Uh, he's had quite a few looks, Division three, so time will sort of tell there. Um, he, Tim's, Tim's played good hockey, though. You're talking about that last period of hockey that he played on uh, Saturday night. He did play an excellent period, and that's what you want out of your starting goaltender. And uh, I'll give credit to him. Uh, the meeting I talked about before, we went around the locker room, and he guaranteed me a victory. That was enough for me to play him. I wasn't sure I was going to after his 
performance on uh, Friday night, to be honest. So uh, he stepped up to the plate. He told me what he was going to do, and he went out and proved it. So good for him. And I would say in front of him, even though they outshot us 24-4, to 4, I think we did a pretty good job of blocking shots in that period, and I think we did a pretty good job of keeping the pucks to the outside. So a lot of their chances weren't maybe grade-A scoring chances. They are from out farther, but he stopped every puck that he should have and then some. So. I talk about the help that Matt Massey's has given you. I know that you're in a transition. You're still looking for an assistant coach. I mean, I know he's going to be helping you with these tryouts too here mm -hmm. as they go on at the Omni Center. But what has he meant to you as far as getting ready for games, adjusting, and just what he's given to, given to the guys, I guess, overall? Yeah, he's been a key guy for us. I mean, he's a guy that uh, early on in the season when uh, John Hamry was still here, he was on the ice with us, I think it was two days a week. And as soon as uh, that uh, adjustment was made, I asked him if he could start coming out every day with us and helping me out during practice and, uh, you know, just basically just pushing pucks around and providing assistance. But uh, over the course of the last few weeks, he's actually been coming on a couple of the road trips with me, been on the bench with me during games. And uh, as you guys may or may not know, it's not easy easy running a junior hockey bench on your own. So nope. uh, obviously the assistant. You got Ralphie, huge, though. Ralphie yeah. helps out with that. Well, Ralphie runs the team. So. Yeah. <laughs> right, Ralph? Yeah, yeah. He's over there. He'll be joining us in a little while. we got some cabbage bowling coming up. Can't oh, it's a wait. teaser. A teaser. Can't wait. But, no, Matt, Matt, Matt's done a great job. He's been a huge help. And, uh, you know, like he, he's there every time you need something, and he's always there uh, just providing assistance in any aspect that I need it. So he's been a very good help for me. Now you got a big uh, road trip coming up uh, heading to Aberdeen, going to play one there. Aberdeen's been playing great hockey mm -hmm. uh, since they picked up Nagelvort and Nett. I mean, mm -hmm. he's had a couple of shutouts, and he's been big. He, he came here and won one, too. Uh, you know, obviously, he's a hot net minder right now, but uh, the team's playing a lot better on the power play. I think a lot better offensively. We witnessed that against yep. the top team in the Central mm -hmm. Division. Uh, what do you want out of this road trip? One against Aberdeen, two against Brookings. What are you looking for? Oh, I want three wins, to All be right, honest. good. So. Three W's work for me. Six <laughs> no, we, points. Let's get them. We talked in the locker room over the course of the next, uh, what is it, six games or seven games, whatever it is that we have left, that we want to be as successful as we can. And uh, one, we don't want to finish last in the division. We got to, you know, we are in last right now. Aberdeen has been playing good hockey, and it's going to be a tough game going in there. And then we got two tough games in Brookings so uh, all I'm asking is that we go in there and we compete we go in there play our best hockey we keep things simple and stick to a game plan for 60 minutes like we talked about before um, uh, we can't have individuals on the team we need a team effort and uh, I think if we do that I think uh, the way we've been playing I think we're gonna have good outcomes so yeah, you talk about just going into these games, AJ, and you want to have a launching board for next year. I know that's probably where the focus is not, but, you know, you think about that and you look at some teams in the past in any professional rank, teams that are hot going into the end of the year usually start off hot at the beginning of next year, mm -hmm. and you got a lot of young players that are very talented. So what, what's the mentality of the guys? I mean, obviously they want three wins, but yeah. do they see the future in front of them? Because I think, honestly, this team's coming together. Yeah, well, if they don't, I've, uh, I can't make it more apparent for them the direction that we're headed. <laughs> So, uh, I, as you know, I'm a very upfront guy. I'm going to tell it like it is. And, uh, you know, I made it very apparent to them that uh, we are playing for next year at this point. Like, yeah, we're, we're still trying to win this season, but you got a point to me to prove for next season. Like, we got, we got, I think it's, what, 10 total tenders that we're allowed to give out, two PHL and one 3HL one. So you actually have uh, seven official tenders that you can give to anybody so that's seven guys that are coming in here next year we got a draft also so i mean that's spots that are most likely going to be taken uh they may or may not you got to prove to me that you want to be here next season and uh anybody that's letting off the gas may uh, end up with uh looking for a new roster spot next season so that's just being completely honest but um you know what guys are focused right now um actually i'll uh, Andy Faust was the last guy to go in the meeting I had in the locker room, and he ended up talking for, you know him, he can yap all day, but he ended <laughs> up talking for probably five, ten minutes in there and basically just saying, come on, boys, we got, you know, we got seven games left. We're, this is the closest team I've ever been on. Like, let's have some fun here down the stretch, and let's play good hockey. And it was, it was just really good. It was good to see him step up and speak his mind. You know, he's a guy that cares and wants the best. And I've had conversations with all the guys over the last week, week and a half now of, uh, you know, do you want to return here next year? What are your plans? Where are we at? And from the looks of it, pretty much every single guy wants to be back that is available and can be back. So I like I like the makeup of next year's team right now. We do need to add a couple pieces in there, but uh, I think it's a very solid base for what we want to accomplish next year. I'm just glad when you talked to Andy, he didn't put his footy in his mouth. That's <laughs> that I'm glad. He very nice.
How about that? That's fantastic. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah, that was creative. Um, now, uh, you know, I basically we'll close out uh, this segment of the show with, with building on what you were just talking about for next year. And obviously you mentioned the different uh, ways that you can bring players in. Winning games towards the end of the season going to be huge for the Cooley Region Chill in terms of attracting some guys from out there. I mean, you know, closing things out, yeah, it's important for those guys to play strong that want to come back and have that place for them to come back to. But also to win those games, it's going to be more attractive to guys out there that are looking at the Cooley Region Chill. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned the spots. Do you have any names you can tell us? We know that uh, Gabe Flood is an affiliate player. He's been tendered for next season. He played a couple of games Looked for us against good. Janesville. Looked pretty quick out there. Yeah. You know, obviously a little nervous at times, but uh, that's to be expected in his first games in the North American Hockey League and a hometown guy in front mm -hmm. of the hometown fans. But what can you give us? Uh, I'll get my big mouth into trouble here today, so <laughs> why not? Uh, we, we've tendered, we tendered Gabe Flood. We've tendered uh, Tanner Barnes. He's a forward who played for the Chicago Fury. He actually was at our camp this last year, uh, played in the All-Star game, ended up going to Brookings and played the first five games of the season with them. They let him go, ended up playing down for the Chicago Fury Midget team. Uh, tendered a kid named Kurt Hallbach from the Milwaukee Junior Admirals. He's a defenseman, uh, really skilled uh, gifted skating defenseman, um, and we just tendered a defenseman from uh, uh, Grand Rapids High School named Curtis Simonson, a big kid who's a little bit raw, but I think he's going to be a big-time player for us. So, And i got a couple other ones in the works right now that we've offered out. It's just a matter of uh, uh, the kids making final decisions. So hopefully sooner than later. And we actually just had a guy out here skating from Whitefish Bay the other day, a defenseman who's a pretty skilled defenseman that I think is a little bit of an unknown. And a uh, guy that we're very interested in. So I tend to be an opinionated guy as well, and I uh, will say really? what's on my mind. No I, way. I know you guys probably are shocked to hear that. <laughs> but but would you say, AJ, that one of the ingredients missing on this team this year is a physical forward that is intimidating that other guys are afraid of? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know that necessarily we need an intimidating fighter, so to speak, if that's what you're getting at, I guess. But I think there's definitely more physicality that's needed. I think mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to play a tough style. I like to play an in-your-face style, and that's the kind of forecheck I'm running with the team here. Uh, I want guys that want to get in the mix and aren't going to shy away or back down. That doesn't mean you got to do it cheaply or illegally, but I want guys that are going to be in your face, that are going to make it hard for you to make plays, that are going to finish their checks every time. And So that's definitely something that I'm looking for and looking to add for next season. So, All right. I think we should close out the show with the Jesse Tredinick, or I should say the segment with the Jesse Tredinick <laughs> penalty good. shot goal. Let's Are you all that. right with that? All right. Here's yeah. Tredinick with a chance on the breakaway. He gets pulled down. We'll the get AJ's behind. take here at the base. And finally the call is made. The fans ask for it, and they get it. And here it is. Jesse Tredinick picks it up. The Alaska native comes right up the slot with a forehand, shoots and scores, and hits the bottle. Oh, 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 oh it's Lucky Charm. Lucky Charms! <laughs> it's not Shepard's pie! It's made of oats and food dye! Put it in milk! It is! They won't dry! It's not Shepard's wow. pie! Were you drinking when you wrote that? No, actually yeah. I wasn't. I don't know oh, where you come charm. up with this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's, He's always colorful. colorful and he had the Lucky Charms, charms in mind there. And of course, it, for, if it makes no sense to you, it, it was kind of a St. Paddy's Day uh, yeah. webcast. That's kind of what we were doing with that. <laughs> All right, when we return, we're going to continue with that St. Paddy's Day theme. Derek O'Flynn. Aye. Right? Me lad. Tim Shaughnessy. Even more me lad. Right? And Mike Aye. McMahon. That's pretty Irish. We have a game for him to play. We'll find out more about those guys. That's coming up next on the Chill Coaches Lucky Show. Lucky Charms. Domino's of La Crosse in Alaska is a proud sponsor of the Cooley Region Chill. Check out Domino's early week carryout special. Pick up a large three topping pizza for just $7.99 every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. For a complete Domino's menu, special offers, or to order online and track your orders, go to dominoes.com and like us on Facebook at Domino's Lacrosse. 
Do you, Kasasa? Do you have the financial equivalent of a green thumb? If you, Kasasa, you do. With Kasasa, I get to make things grow because it gives me money to help me save. My free checking account gives me massive interest that goes automatically into my saver account. Mix in nationwide ATM fee refunds, and the next thing, I've got a whole lot of green. So do you, Kasasa? Don't just bank. Kasasa. Kasasa Cash and Saver. Only available at America's finest community banking institutions. Certain restrictions apply. See financial institution for details. Kasasa. Now at Cooley Bank. Member FDIC. Now, back to two guys that have lots of practice playing the shillelagh, Rick McFrankie and Scotty O'Gran. Welcome back to the Chill Coaches Show, a special St. Paddy's Day edition. It's the lucky time! Oh, there it is. The Irish accent <laughs> came out again, and uh, I guess uh, we figured that it was a great week to have three, and I believe you're all Irish in some way. I mean, Tim Shaughnessy, Derek O'Flynn, and Mike McMahon. Those are all pretty Irish names right there. We're so smart, we plan ahead. We do plan Two ahead. Two weeks believe, even. Believe it or not. How and, about uh, that? And let's start with Tim first here. <laughs> Tim, uh, get ready for cabbage bowling, Yeah, too. look at that. Feel pretty, the weight, Pretty Rick. house of cabbage. Feel the weight, Rick. Yeah. Like uh, that? Now, uh, let's talk about the, the big game you had on Saturday. Um, you know, we talked with AJ. AJ said, hey, I called everybody into the office, and I said, you know, why should you be playing this weekend? You know, what 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 are you going to bring to the table on Saturday after a hard-fought game that you lost 5-3 to three on Friday? And uh, you said, hey, I'm going to get out there and I'm going to get it done. And uh, you did exactly that and a huge third period. Talk about what your mindset was heading into that third. You know they're the top team in the Central Division. You know they're explosive on the power play. Uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about your mindset heading into that third. Tim. Well, going to the third, I knew that they were going to come out hard. And just the attitude in the locker room, I knew that the guys were ready to go. Like we had a 3-1 to one lead, and normally, like some teams I've been on, they did, we just shut down and then they come back. But everybody really kept it up, and we had a great third period as a team. Like I made some big saves with the guys in front of me. They blocked a lot of shots. Made it really easy, kept all the shots from the outside. So it just, everybody got it done in the third. Timmy, let's go back to the Friday game, too. I know that was a loss, but overall, I think, you know, the team played pretty well. I even say on the power play, I saw a lot of things that were vastly improved. How does that make you feel as a goaltender when you see that improvement on your special teams? You kind of got that confidence that they might put something up on the board for you to back up. That's exactly it. I mean, when when we do get a power play, it's really nice to have that in the back of your head that, you know, we could get a goal here. Like, we, we got a good shot at because our power play's moving the puck really well. Our, and also our penalty kill has been playing really well also. So coming into, coming into this weekend, knowing that our special teams is doing really well, we uh, have a good shot at having a good weekend here. How good is that Austin power play? Is it as good as advertised? Because I tell you what, I, 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 they, they just seem so flawless when they move with the puck. It's like they know where everybody's going to be on every single play in that, in that type of uh, situation, I guess. You they do. Say. There, There's a lot of good players in that power play. I've actually played against a lot of them before this in high school. They all, like A.J. Reed played at St. Thomas Academy. Brandon Wallen played at White Bear Lake, so I know all of them very well. I know a lot of their moves. So, I mean, they when they do move the puck around, yeah, they're tough to stop. But uh, if you can uh, get out, challenge them. Our guys were blocking shots, so when we did everything right, we uh, we were pretty uh, unbeatable on the penalty kill. It's an Austin Powers play. Oh, 3D House of Cabbage. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I haven't been drinking, I swear. Uh, St. Paddy's Day. It is St. Paddy's Day. I'll black behave. and tans for everyone. Uh, no, behave. not you guys. No black and tans for you guys. Uh, let's talk to Derek here for a second. Derek, uh, probably the most of the Irish names, O'Flynn. Uh, you, uh, you definitely were out there crashing and banging this weekend, and uh, you know that was a big win. As far as teams that you played in the Central Division, you know, obviously they, they, the Austin Bruins were the, the top team during the regular season. Are they yeah. the toughest team that you've played against? Um, I think so. All of them, every player on their team competes like it's their last game. They're going all out. Um, and that's how we match it, too. We go against them and, like, we try to play our game above theirs and um, play harder in the corners and just hit everybody we can. You guys did a pretty good job on Wallen, I thought. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah, part of the game plan, Friday, was that a discussion? On Friday, he was – wasn't even out there really. He was scared to seem like, and it's carried on to Saturday too. Yeah, he's a he's a dangerous guy, man. That guy. 
And I know him and Mac are buddies, you know, and they have that little bit of a rivalry. But uh, you guys did a nice job, a very nice job on him. Yeah, so one thing, one thing, Derek, I, I wanted to comment on is uh, the hits over the weekend. You know, the hit on Mac, obviously, um, and then you get uh, the hit the next night back in the boards over there. Just, I mean, a couple of those shots were just, I don't know, were they – what do you guys think? I mean, I, I know that team competes like a, there's no tomorrow, but are right. those hits necessary in those situations? Definitely the one on Zebra on Saturday mm -hmm. night was a uh, very dirty hit. How is Max, by the way? Uh, he's doing better. Uh, he does have a concussion. and um, Severe concussion is yeah. what I understand it um, to be and uh, probably not back for the season. Right. Um, but I think he's in better spirits right now. He's not as, uh, as bad as he was on, on Saturday. He was pretty out of it then, um, so that's fortunate. But it's we're gonna miss him in the lineup. Absolutely, great guy, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know I, I think he was closing out the season pretty strong. Yeah. So obviously it's disappointing for him because he he was really starting to play some of his best hockey. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Mike McMahon. First time you've been a part of the Chill Coaches Show. It's great to have you. Good, Thanks. good performance this weekend yourself, Thanks. using the big body, uh, getting guys uh, closing them out along the boards. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, give us your take on this past weekend series. Uh, I thought it was a good series. I thought uh, we did a good job keeping them to the outside because they got a lot of guys who, if they're in the slot, they're going to score every time like Dickman and Wallen. Mm -hmm. So we try and contain them to the outside and try and limit their good scoring chances. So I thought the Fords did a good job and the, all the D containing them. Dickman's done pretty well against us this season. I mean, that's a big boy, but yeah. he's actually pretty smooth on his skates and has really good hands. Yeah, he's, uh, he's hard to go against, but you just kind of got to contain them and try and keep them away from the danger areas like the slot and top of the circles. So who gets closer to the Tim Ebner Memorial drape and size, Alexei Mustadiemi or Jay Dickman? Uh, maybe Dickman's a little thicker, so he's a little harder so, to move. He's a little thicker. Yeah. He's a little thicker. They don't know about the yeah. Tim Ebner Memorial drape. That's the let, drape. Let, let, not, you know, obviously uh, not every rink has a drape in the center of the ice, right? Uh, have, have you seen that very often in, in rinks uh, across, uh, you know, the league? Uh, I've never seen it before. I've never so. seen a drape uh, before. No, I, I, I can't say that I've seen it either. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we all hope and yeah. pray someday that the <laughs> Tim Ebner Memorial drape will no longer Somewhere be Somewhere Tim Ebner is working on removing the Tim Ebner <laughs> Memorial drape. I can guarantee you that. All right, uh, Mike, I wanted to ask you this. What, what do you want out of the remainder of this season? You only got a few games left. What are your goals and what are your plans for next year? Uh, I guess my goal is to uh, – keep making the lineup consistently so that's kind of been my big struggle for the year so just playing consistently for the whole game and the whole weekend and next year I want to come back and you know play the whole season and make a good impression and have a have success on the ice well obviously we wish you the best of luck in all those things and uh you know again you guys uh, really were impressive on Saturday night for sure Friday night I thought was a good game as well and Kudos on that. Get ready for the long road trip there. You got Aberdeen, and then you got two in Brookings. Welcome to the White House, boys. Uh, uh, yeah, on the White House. Get ready yeah. for that uh, train at 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. Amtrak's no a calling. No doubt about it. Uh, before we get to uh, Cabbage Bowling, uh, we do want to play a little uh, a little game with you here. Each one of you, we're going to give you 60 seconds. We have enough time, Timmy? 60 seconds? Got five minutes? All right, let's get right to it here. Uh, you're going to start a timer. I, I want you to name as many Irish NHL players as you can in 60 seconds. And the winner gets Lucky Charms! Yeah, and then uh, we have nice parting gifts for you, yes, red potatoes. Yes, uh, no yes. matter what, you get a red potato. So, all right, you're going to start with Tim here? Yeah, let's do it. All right, go ahead. Oh, and, and go. And go. Let's see, uh, Phil Castle. Uh, no. Yeah. What do you think? Yes. Castle? All right, we'll give it to you. That's yeah. one. All right. Um, let's go. Scott Hartnell. Uh, no. 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 Hartnell. Mm -hmm. Crap. Um. Uh, let's see. I'm guessing Char is not Irish. No, he's not at all. <laughs> he's no, big. He's Slovakian. I'm pretty sure of that one. How about Tim Thomas? Uh, Tim yep. Thomas is a yep. good Irish yep. name. Right, there we go. There we go. Sure, um, Bigali. Any other ones? How uh, much time? Oh, hold on. Hold Thirty on. seconds. Got Thirty. Um. This is Tim Shaughnessy is guessing Irish see? NHL names. I'm an Tim Irishman. Shaughnessy, very no Irish. Irishman. You've gotten two so far. Let's see. <laughs> 20 seconds left. Are there any more goalies? Because that'd be good. I got a list goal, right Irish here goalies. because I couldn't think He's of them. That, I, I wasn't see. that good at it, so I have a see, list. You can even go with retired ones because I got retired. a retired one here too. Oh, Who's actually was born in Belfast, Northern Ireland. 
Wow, that that's okay, impressive. You know, I'm gonna let this three Plate. seconds run out. Played yep, with the wild. And we're done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got two. You got two. All right, let's see if right. Derek O'Flynn can beat him here. Uh, start the timer. And we're right. off. All right, go. Good. Uh, Mike Green. Mike Green. Uh, not on my list, ah, but I think nice. I can go with Mike Green. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Uh, Chris Draper. Chris Draper. Mm, I don't think that's nope, Irish. No, nope. nope. not going to give you Irish. Uh, Darren McCarty. Darren McCarty. Yes. Very yes. good. There's one. Here we go. All right. He's got two. Um, all right. Oh, got now, now we're, now we're a little subject here. So how are you doing? Yeah, look at he's uh, trying to stop him at two. <laughs> they want the lucky no, time. No, that's two minutes for interference. <laughs> Thirty seconds, you know, Derek. Franzen's not. No, no. No, Franzen's no, not. No, nope, Swedish. Um, sounds German, but he's Swedish. Yeah. How much time's he got left? He's got twenty seconds. Twenty, 20 seconds, seconds left. Seconds. Derek O'Flynn is tied at two with Tim Shaughnessy. Irish names of NHL players. <laughs> Can he beat him? Is there any other Mick? There's a whole <laughs> list. You'd be shot. I'm gonna go well, through I'm, some I of these names when it's done. It, you can of. see it now. You can see it. Don't let him see through there. Oh, there's there's got to be McDonald, some kind oh. of McDonald in the NHL. Is he out? Time's up. There is no. a McDonald, but you got to have the first <laughs> name. Otherwise, it's oh. otherwise it's no good. There is a McDonald. All right, now you can take a look at the sheet. All right, now it's time for Mike McMahon. Mike McMahon, get ready. Are you ready? Hit yep. the timer. And there we go. All right, go. Uh, Matt Cullen on the wild. Yeah. Uh, yep. Matt, there yep. you go. That's there's one. Uh, Mike McMahon Brandon with one. Shanahan. Shanahan. Yes, that's yeah, two. that's two. Mm -hmm. um, All right, look at him go. He got two. Mike McMahon. They're trying to interrupt him. Uh, trying to interfere with him here again. Eric Johnson. Nope. No. Nope. That's uh, that's gonna be Swedish. Uh, American born, but still Swedish. Mike Madano. Mike Madano. Nope. nope. That one's not gonna do it. How much time's he got? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. <laughs> Mike McMahon tied at two. Tim um, Shaughnessy. Derek O'Flynn had two. Mike Rupp. Mike Rupp. No. no. Eh. That's abuse. Not gonna work. How much time? Got 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Um, Nick Letty? Nick Letty. Ooh, no, I don't no. think he's Irish. I'm not, 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 not going to qualify. 10 seconds. Patrick Kane? Yeah, Patrick there it is. Kane, he there is. Ding, 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 ding. He gets the lucky charms. Don't throw them, though. The Omni Center staff's had enough of that. I'm not going to throw them. I was going to gingerly toss them. Don't don't throw those okay. at all. All right, so the winner of the uh, the Irish Surname Challenge here is Mike McMahon. Congratulations. Congratulations. He's, he's a winner and on his very limited, first appearance. limited edition, all clovers. Just want to show that real quick here. It is. They're magically right. delicious. And Enjoy. Then, Enjoy and, the lucky charm. And the parting, the parting gifts for you guys, because they are microwavable. It says on the bag, if you get yeah. hungry on the bus or at the White there House. It is. Take those with there you there go, to guys. Aberdeen. Yeah. And have All a right. uh, safe trip. And, and uh, Don't say I that I never gave you nothing. Stick around for Cabbage Bowling. That's coming up next. Cabbage Bowling right here. Shiver and Ralphie taking on the chill players here. And uh, that's coming up in our next segment here oh, on the Chill Coaches Show. Not from Buffalo Wild Wings tonight. We'll be back there again next week with this from the Iceberg Fan Deck at the Alaska Omni Center. We'll be back in a moment. America's best value in and Econo Lodge in La Crosse, Wisconsin is the home of the Cooley Region Chills guest opponents. Rooms are available with refrigerators, microwaves, coffee makers, free Wi-Fi, and continental breakfast. Mention the Chill's special daily, weekly, and monthly rates when you book your stay at the America's Best Value Inn and Econo Lodge in La Crosse, Wisconsin, where people stay by choice, not by chance. Like a puck flying across the ice, Beaver Builder Supply has a fleet of trucks to deliver your building supplies at warp speed. Looking for roofing or siding? Thinking of a new garage or window replacement? Beaver Builder Supply is your solution store. If you have questions or for order pickups, we're located in Holman, right on Highway 53. Don't burn your time wandering around a big store. Come to Beaver Builder Supply for immediate top flight service and quality supplies. Go chill. Would you like to be the first to know before Quick Trip raises the price of gas by receiving alerts on your cell phone? To sign up, text KTKS to 75309. From there, you'll click on the link to choose your favorite Quick Trip store. You'll receive alerts before Quick Trip raises the price of fuel, and you'll receive other money saving coupons too. So text KTKS to 75309 to enroll, or visit our website at quicktrip.com and click on Quick Trip Mobile. Message and data rates may apply. Welcome back to the Cooley Region Chill Coaches Show. I'm sitting down in the place where all the magic happens, the Cooley Region Chill head office, and I'm with the owner of the Cooley Region Chill, Michelle Bryant. Michelle, thanks for making time for us today in the Chill Coaches Show. 
Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. It's uh, kind of a fun day for us. We're starting our Junior Chill AAA tryouts, and it's exciting. It is very exciting, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But what I wanted to do first was, obviously, the backdrop here that you see is Cooley Region Chill merchandise, and you have quite a bit of it. Uh, I see that there's some replica jerseys, some tie-dyed T-shirts, long-sleeve stuff. Those new hats that you got there, those are fantastic. And, and how does one get these besides when the office is open? And first off, tell us, when can someone come to the office and buy the merchandise, and can they order online? Um, right now, we don't have ability to order online, but we're looking to do that for next year. And uh, we do have office hours during the week, primarily Tuesdays and Thursdays and Friday on home game days. Um, but most of the time, folks call or they come to our games, and we encourage them to come to our games and purchase the merchandise. And, of course, they have a display set up as you walk into the rink. You can go and, and take a look at the, the, the variety of merchandise that you have available. And uh, it's nice and easy. You make it simple for people on game day. Uh, just one game remaining at home, that on March 30th against the Austin Bruins. You have to be pretty excited about this past weekend where the Chill played quite well against the Bruins. In fact, winning that Saturday game 3-2. to two. Yeah, they played really well. I think most of the, the last couple of weeks, AJ has been looking for the boys to play a full 60-minute game. They were super close to that on Friday, and it slipped away from us. But Saturday, I think they all came out and played a full 60 minutes, and we were able to pull out the win. Now, today is the AAA tryouts for the new Junior Chill. Tell us a little bit about the program, and uh, what are you expecting for numbers? Um, tonight we have our 2000, uh, 2001 group. We'll probably have somewhere between 30 and 40 kids that we're looking at coming tonight to field one team at this point. Um, we're having U18, 98, 99, and then we've actually partnered with uh, the Junior Cardinals AAA program out of St. Mary's University in Winona. Um, they're handling the younger groups of kids, uh, and, and we're actually going to share the program at the MITE level, but the uh, 0203 and then some 01s as well will play over there, share ice between the two um, arenas, and just kind of partner to develop kids. Tell us a little bit about who's going to be coaching. I know A.J. Dagenhart, head coach of the Chills, is going to be very involved. Do you have other coaches on staff, and is there still availability for coaches that want to partake? Um, we have uh, a gentleman named Pat Hogan who has coached at the AAA level and coaches actually in La Crescent. Greg Sears, who is a lacrosse high school coach, is going to be involved as well. Uh, Matt Massey, who's been our coaching intern all season and has been a great support to AJ uh, the last two months um, since we've made our coaching transition. And yes, you know, there are some coaches in the area that you know, would like to try to you know, come out and help us and have the goals of you know, developing kids. Um, we'd love to talk to them. Michelle, what kind of schedule is the AAA program going to be playing? I mean, how many games are on the docket, and w from when to when do they start playing? Uh, typically, a AAA spring-summer AAA program can be anywhere from March through June or March through August. Ours will be March through August. We'll do four tournaments. We like to try to do one tournament a month, um, April, May, June, and then August. Give them, give them a little time off in July. Um, and then we kind of support those tournaments uh, pre-tournament. We have quite a few practices stacked up to prepare the kids for that tournament. Typically, you have four to five games per tournament. Uh, those tournaments that we're going to play this year for the teams will be up in the Twin Cities. And uh, there are some pretty good tournaments. My kids have been a part of them in the past and should be some good competition. This, of course, the first step in the tryouts today, and uh, everyone looks forward to that. Now, obviously, the season uh, is coming to an end here for the 2012-13 season, but the 13-14 is already getting underway, and things are being discussed, and plans are being made. And obviously, when uh, players come back again uh, at the end of August, which is when they all start to report and the team is selected after the tryouts and all that process, there's going to be the need for billet families, and, and uh, that's a part of the process of junior hockey. How would one be considered to be a billet family? What steps would they take? Would they get a hold of you? What would they do? Um, they can go onto our website, and under community, we have a tab that um, talks about our housing. Um, Debbie Horseman, who's our housing director, who's done a great job this year, um, you can contact her or myself. Um, there's an email link, and it does go over all the details of what it kind of requires to be um, to host a player, and it's a really great experience. So we encourage folks to read that information and then contact us, and we can get them additional information beyond that. Are you looking forward to uh, next year already? I know you have two camps planned already. Is that correct? Uh, yes, we have our first pre-draft camp uh, planned for the end of May or third weekend in May, and then our main camp will be mid-July, and we're looking to possibly do another one in June. That's uh, in the planning works right now. 
Registration forms are online. Just go to crchill.com, and you can uh, download the form and get it in. And uh, I think they can just uh, fax it in, correct? Yeah, they can fax it, email it, uh, mail it in. Yep. All right. Michelle Bryant, owner of the Cooley Region Chill. It's been very nice visiting with you. Best of luck for the AAA tryouts tonight. And as always, uh, we say go chill. Junior chill. <laughs> <laughs> junior chill, yep. Cooley Region Sports Network, Scotty Grand, the Chill Coaches Show, a live look into the Cooley Region Chill. We're inside the penalty box with the one and the only Brian Simpson from 95.7 Morning Sickness on 95.7 The Rock, and of course, everybody's favorite helper, Nicole Noy. So, guys, I want to ask you, I mean, we get to see the game on the ice, but what goes on behind the ice that we don't see that you guys prepare for? Uh, well, we make a lot of fun of each other. Um, <laughs> We, I try to tickle Nicole as much as possible. She likes to sing along to a lot of the awful songs that she plays, so I try to get her on the mic. Um, you know. Is there a favorite that she likes to sing? Teach Me How to Dougie uh, <laughs> is one. She also likes the Rack City song. I, I, they're all terrible, so I have a hard time remembering them. Um, but never any good songs. But she won't even sing Happy Birthday. Yeah. I get left singing Happy Birthday, and I'm like the worst singer in the world. They just leave me to do it. I don't quite know why. That's the one time I wish Shiver could talk. I just, <laughs> he's like, dude, can you just sing for me? Seriously. <laughs> N Nicole, I, your rebuttal on the music taste, number one. And, and number two, what do you do to keep this guy under control? Because we, we all know how, what kind of crazy wit he's got back here. Yeah, well, I'm not the one who put most of the music on. I mean, there are some songs that I put on, although Will, who has been taking over the music, uh, hasn't been playing those too much. Um, but, I mean, we have to keep it fun back here, so we sing and dance back here all the time, and we just do it a lot of times to annoy Brian. Um, yeah. But, I mean, you just kind of, we ju we're just pretty good, and we keep each other in check pretty much. What's the oddest thing you guys have ever had to prepare for since you guys have been doing this? Um, I would have to say it was probably last week when, uh, when point streak froze up in the third period and Nicole started to spaz out, like freaking out and I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And like, you know, the, the clock's running. Uh, she couldn't get the computer to work at all. She thought it was a mouse problem. So we stole the mouse from the music computer and it, eventually it ended up working, but that was, that was pretty bad. Also, Chris, uh, earlier this season messed up real bad and had the wrong teams or the oh, no, wrong that was Lydia. Lydia messed up. Sorry, Chris. My bad, Chris. It wasn't you. Sorry. Uh, anyways, I just assume that they're both bad. Uh, but, uh, did he, did, did she have the wrong game, the wrong yeah, teams? We, had, we were playing, I think it was Janesville and they had Johnstown or Jamestown or something in as the other team that we were playing and it was totally wrong. And Michelle got a nasty email from the league on that one and we had to get that squared away. I quick. remember that. <laughs> Trying to keep track of the game and our team's not even showing up on the board. Ah, uh, the Quans that is media. Good times. Now, we all know about AJ's little helper, Ralphie. Now, I wanted to ask you guys, does he come over and time you guys on how you do your job? Does he have uh, – because I tell you what, he's great. He knows it. He tells us this all the mm -hmm. time. Does he do the same for you guys? Uh, I don't have much interaction with Ralphie. I just kind of, I just kind of look at him, you know, with a quizzical look on my face. I just, you know, but he's always around, and I know Nicole deals with him. But he's, what's good about him is you can just tell him to do something. At least from my standpoint, you tell him to do something, he just does it. You know, and just, <laughs> hey kid, go get that. Okay. I know. Last uh, last game, he wanted a game puck, and I'm like, Ralphie, don't you have one already? And he's like, Yeah, but I want another. I'm like, Well, how about this? If you do what anyone tells you, because lately he's been a little uh, not wanting to do what people have been telling him. So I'm like, If you do what anyone tells you today, then I'll make sure to get you a puck. And then some of the boys had called him Worm, and I'm like, What's that for? And he's, he apparently didn't like the nickname, so I go, mm. And you have to let the boys call you a Worm for the entire Ooh. day. So mm. he did. So I got him a puck at the end of the game. So Ralphie's becoming defiant in some degree, huh? Sassy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have to work on keeping him in line. Just tell him to drink his Ovaltine. It'll be okay. Um, now, best anthem singer you guys have had this year? Um, who's the – oh, uh, uh, Christina Gross. Uh, nah, yeah. I, just, <laughs> I know why. I, I may or may not be in love uh, with Christina Gross. No, she was great, actually. She was a really good singer. Um, was it Hunter's sister? Hunter's she, Sean, was it Sean, Sean Lang's Lang. sister? Yeah, uh, yep, she, she was a, good. She did a good job. Dan LaFay does a really good job. I liked the little five-year-old that we had out here. He did was all yep. dressed up in a suit and tie and – yeah. did really well. I, I, I honestly wish it would be like the Bears games, though, Frankie. I, oh, I got to be I, I really wish that, uh, you know, that 
more people would take pride in the song and sing along with it and it would be a celebration of the song as opposed i get it you know i understand that that's kind of traditionally what it's about but i just it's so much more um emotional and everybody's singing and enjoying the song so but no we, we've had some real good luck with singers here nobody's forgot i haven't had to do a maurice cheeks or anything like that and get out on the ice. Yeah, no, say so, that. But i've heard some words switched up a little bit a couple times <laughs> ronald got them all right though yeah he, i was surprised at how good ronald was i didn't know what to expect from ronald mcdonald but he got out there and he did his thing and and he boy he had a harmonica and the whole i was like dude i'm like it's it's okay it's just you know minor league <laughs> hockey game you're all right buddy it's cool so Sometimes the fans have requests for you guys to say certain things during the game. What's the weirdest thing someone's asked you guys to say over the PA announcement? Um, I don't know. I mean, we we have birthday requests that usually come in. We did have the wedding proposal that mm. one night, which mm. was Michelle called me and she's like, "Oh, are you?" Or she's like, "Can you talk?" And I'm like, uh, "Yeah." And she's like, "Okay." And I was freaking out. I'm like, "What did I do wrong?" And she's like, "Oh no, we just have a wedding proposal." And so we had to make sure we had a certain song and we had to make sure that went really really well. But I had a guy ask me to mention Slippery Jim's Bait Shack. I don't uh, I, was, I was just kind of like, I don't know, dude. I don't know if that's really a legit business or anything. But, no, it's 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 uh, it's it's well scripted. Uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, advertisers that we have to mention and stuff. So the only real strange requests we get uh, are birthdays or, you know, the wedding uh, thing. Michelle was in a tizzy about that. That's always fun to walk into. She's like a buzz saw. Like, oh, my God, everybody needs to get in a meeting. and. She's funny though. She's uh, she gets really worked up about stuff like that. It's cute. And now, obviously, you know, with Michelle's first year as being owner, she wants to do things a different way. How have you enjoyed working with her this past year? It sounds like you guys have, for the most part. Yeah, I think she's very organized. She's very well put together, and she just wants the best for the team. So she's really open to any ideas we might have and stuff like that. And I know coming up in April, we're gonna have this big planning session for next year, and um, just to see what we can bring in differently. How about you, Brian? Um, boy, uh, she is very approachable when it comes to suggestions about things. Um, you know, she listened, uh, and dealt with an issue that I had early in the season, actually the first game, the first home game, I had a big issue and I got dealt with right away, which was nice. Um, so she, yeah. And like Nicole said, she's just, she's very organized. Uh, and there seems to be a, a lot of forethought into into you know as opposed to what's just going to happen tonight or this game or this weekend um what's happening in the future you know not just even this season but next season you know things that i had said you know hey we should try this next season she's like yep we're already thinking about doing that and so it'll be interesting to see how next season pans out and nicole you do a lot of the player interviews for us from time to time you're the you, you like to keep track of the chirping that's going on Who's down in the box now? now now favorite person to talk to for you and you can look at this from a point of view <laughs> as yeah exactly yeah, there you go <laughs> kind of yeah all right so, so let, let's go ahead and get right into this here um well i mean they're all different i mean you hear different things from different players um no brian that's just andy has a song there was um a former player on a different team whose name she was makes andy cookies for him, so cookies. uh we had a song called Andy, You're a Star, so whenever Andy scores, we play that. Um, but I think it's just fun. I know Mac's always fun to talk to. He's mm. usually got good stories. Um, I heard some couple good stories from the boys about how they went uh, hiking on the bluffs the other day and then went sledding, and a couple of them ended up getting stitches in places that maybe shouldn't be mentioned. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, everyone's – I think they're all just different. I mean, I've got different things. Like, before every period, I'll be in the back hallway, give the guys knuckles, and – always hit the same players every time and it seems to work so Brian I want to get I want to get your question on this. this is the last question I got for both of you now there's rumors that our mascot Shiver is very well maintenanced high maintained as in he goes in to get certain breaks and gets massages and or treatment from some people from the Gunderson Lutheran staff have you visually seen this happen no, because I'm usually too busy getting massaged in order to notice anybody else getting one. I'll be honest. Kyla does a great job, and uh, anytime you can get a free massage from somebody, especially a nice, uh, nice looking young lady, you, you take that when you're 37 and getting married in two months, because your life's going to be misery pretty soon. Months two months. I'm hoping for two. I mean, maybe we'll push it back. You know. Immediate insight, words of wisdom, and. Some points on life from Brian Simpson and Nicole Noy here on the Inside Look at the Chill Coaches Show on the Cooley Region Sports Network. These people are having fun. If you need me, give me a call, 782-9494. This is how we're going to start it out on the Friday afternoon. And they're actually at work. John Gorman, I will be your DJ slash awesome personality. We got some shaggy black-eyed peas and some Akon. It's JoJo. 
they have a job they've always dreamed of. Gotta go. See you when we see you. <laughs> they lose to the Bears last night, 40-14. to 14. Radio broadcasting is a dynamic, exciting, and rewarding career, and you can get it started right here. Radio 1 Broadcast School in La Crosse is where you'll get the training, the knowledge, the experience, the studio time, and the confidence to be on the air. And the best part is, you'll do that all in just seven weeks. Affordable tuition, GI Bill is accepted, and another class starts soon. Call us at 800-889-2221 or online at Radio1School.com. That's Radio1School.com. Radio 1 Broadcast School. Your new radio career starts right here. Everything we do is to bring you back. Our tot spot makes shopping fun for you and the kids. Our signature meats like burgundy pepper spoon roast, ribs on a stick, and Oktoberfest bratwurst make meal prep a snap. Plus, our spectacular deli takes eating at home to a whole new level. Festival's Boomerang Theory. Innovation to bring you back. Great stuff for not a lot of money. Festival foods. All right, it's time now for the game all the kids are talking about. It's cabbage bowling here during the Chill Coaches Show. And uh, we've got uh, numerous competitors. The first one up for today is going to be Ralphie. Uh, Ralphie, how are you feeling about your first approach here in cabbage bowling? Feel Feeling pretty good. You're feeling pretty good? All right, good. Can you see those pins from here? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Okay. What you want to do now, Ralphie, is you want to just roll that cabbage as hard as you can and knock as many pins. There. Oh, he's not wasting any time. Oh, I think his cabbage had a flat, Ralphie. Your cabbage had a flat. What happened there? I don't know. It's a little tough, isn't it? It's hard for that cabbage to make it all the way there. Shiver can't believe it. All right, you get your second throw now, Ralphie. Uh, I don't know if it was just a bad cabbage or what. I'm not sure. What do you think? I think so. All right, all right. Go get ready. Here comes Ralphie in his second roll, and he gets a bunch. What he picked up? Uh, what seven? Yeah, I can't count that well. Nicole, how many did he get? Seven. seven. All right, Nicole Noy with us. Chris Palmer in the house. Cooley Region Chill intern. How you doing? Feeling good. All right, he's feeling good. He's feeling ready. Here comes Shiver. Shiver's ready to go with his cabbage. I know you can't speak, but you can certainly roll a cabbage. Go ahead. Go ahead, Shiver. Oh, wait. Oh, no, 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 don't go yet. I'm sorry. I'm a bad uh, bowling play-by-play -play guy. I can do I hockey, think, but I can't do bowling. I don't think there's such a thing as a bad bowling play-by-play. -play okay. You have to talk really quiet. You have to whisper. It's kind of like golf. All right, Shiver, are you ready? All right, here he comes. He's ready for his approach. It's Shiver. Cabbage oh, bowling. Steel. Ooh, not bad. That was pretty good. How many did he get? Seven. Seven. D just like Ralphie. But that was his first one. Now he can try to pick up the spare. Shiver to pick up the spare. All right, here he goes. No, no, don't put him back. He's got to pick up his spare. There it is. We're all new to this bowling thing, apparently. All right, here comes Shiver. He makes his approach. Oh, no, it's an overhand, and he picks it up. Oh, I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that, an overhand. I think Shiver wants to try out for the loggers. No, you don't. no overhand in the cabbage bowling. All right. Oh, that cabbage is never going to make it for the next turn here. All right. Go ahead. Yes, Scotty. Was that, a, was that a pro wrestling sign that Shiver just did? I didn't think he watched TV. I'm that was sure. a pro Only wrestling. you would know whether there was pro wrestling sign. I, I have no idea. You follow that stuff? Oh, no, not at all. Nope. 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 You guys into pro wrestling? Not really, no. No. A little bit. <laughs> oh, Mike McMahon. All right. Scotty found somebody that maybe a little bit is into it. That's good to hear. All right, who's up next? Who gets the throw? Nicole, are you going or you want you want to take it? Timmy's going to take it. Tim Shaughnessy up next here. Chill Netminder. How good a bowler is he? Go ahead, Scotty. I'll let you take over and do some play by play. Tim Shaughnessy, goaltender for the Cooley Region Chill, calling for a new head of cabbage to be bowled as the other one is <laughs> placed all over the ground here for the Omni Center staff. <laughs> His approach. And the throw, ooh, not, not too bad. Picked up six on the first try. Pretty decent throw right there. I'm wondering if the heads of cabbage will last for all of the competitors at this point. My guess is they got about maybe one or two more rolls left in them. <laughs> and the second approach here from the goaltender, Jim, Tim Shaughnessy, and oh. oh. He made a little slaw, making slaw. Indeed. Need to add a little dressing to that slaw. I don't know. 
All right, who's up next? Depleted. I, I think we, we the, the cabbage is just about gone here. All right, Derek O'Flynn gonna try to throw here. Come on, come on, Bean, get those pins set up faster. Derek O'Flynn, defenseman of the Cooley Region Chill, looking to obliterate the couple final pieces of cabbage we have left. Produce bowling. This will be, I think this is going to be the official last roll. Yeah, I, I think we might not make it past this one here. Derek O'Flynn in the approach. Oh, only two. It's like he got two down. The cabbage is so small, though. There's barely any cabbage left to hit anything. And the second attempt uh, for Mr. O'Flynn. Oh, he's going with two here. Oh! Not bad, not bad. So he gets six on his attempt. Moving on, if we can move on. If you think there's enough <laughs> left of that cabbage, uh, why, don't, uh, why don't we see what Mike McMahon can do with him? He does also like the pro wrestling like you, Scotty. Yes, he does. And uh, let's see if he can go ahead and let's just say RKO the last pieces He's of cabbage. Shiver's helping to set the pace now. The next question is, Scotty, who's cleaning up the cabbage? Marcus. <laughs> is Marcus here? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll save it, yeah. Hey, hey Ralphie. Ralphie, how much time? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, what time? What? 6.10. No, how much time do we have left in the segment? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't He doesn't know. All right, that's no. All right. go ahead. Mike McMahon, he's going to be the last cabbage bowler here. Oh, oh, look at that. oh, 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 yeah, let, um, I think we'll be delegating that task to our friend Ralphie here, don't you think? Yeah, but Ralphie's got to take us back to the locker room. We're going to do a tour of the Chill Locker Room here in the Chill Coaches Show, something we haven't done before during the Chill Coaches Show. This is a special edition, a St. Paddy's Day edition. We're going to go back to the Chill Locker Room next and get a tour. That's coming up next on the Chill Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Chill Coaches Show and in the locker room. Before we begin our major tour with the one and the only Ralphie, I got a chance here to speak with one of the interns of the Cooley Region Chill, Mr. Chris Palmer. And Chris, you know, you do a lot for the team. I think people don't see. Uh, what are some of the things you've had to interact with this year as far as fans and players go with the franchise? Um, I do a lot of sponsorship stuff. I know I go out and talk to a number of businesses. Um, I, I make cold calls, try and find some different areas of um, businesses that try and get involved with the chill. Um, I know that I do a lot of stuff with the junior chill coming up and I do a lot of um, basically behind the scenes stuff, game day operations. And I try and basically make Michelle's job as least stressful as possible. I know that she's stressed majority of the time, but I know, I mean, I try and do the best that I can to, to basically take that out. And especially on game days, she kind of freaks out and reacts differently. So I know that I try and make it as easy as possible for her. And a lot of people don't realize, you know, how stressful it is to run a junior hockey program, and you've kind of got to see the ins and outs. And, you know, Michelle, I think, has done a pretty good job this year, don't you think? Oh, she's done an excellent job. I know right before the season, you know, she only had a couple weeks to put together a team, and, you know, she hired me right as soon as, you know, I, I came in, and she needed help as much as possible. So anything that I can do to help her out, I try and really make as less stressful as possible. So how much do you have to coordinate with the Omni Center on game day? I don't think a lot of people realize how much work probably goes into everything involved with, you know, all the activities that go on, with maybe, uh, you know, arrangements with getting the beverages and the food out there, coordinating that with the Omni Center staff. I mean, how is that for you? Well, a lot of the times I tend to show up early, you know, maybe two hours, and Nicole usually gets here about 15 minutes before I do. So even before I get in, we work really well, and she, she sets up a lot of the food items, the beverages, but... The things that I really try to do is, you know, I, I mean, I try to make sure everything's going smooth. And, you know, when people come in, if, if there's different volunteers, I explain to them what they need to do, um, different, you know, point streak. And um, I'm starting to do a little bit of the music and also um, the plus and minuses during the penalty box as well. So game day wise, you know, I try to keep Michelle as calm as possible. And, you know, me and Nicole and, you know, a lot of us work together and try to do the best job we can. Yeah, working together, a team aspect, not only on the ice, but also behind the ice as well. Chris, why don't you talk about the relationship you have with Nicole and Brian Simpson? I'm sure at times it can be very entertaining, let's just say. 
Oh, that's that's to say the least. I mean, uh, you know, Nicole and Brian are definitely uh, they're they're a pair, and I mean, they they always try to make it as fun as possible in the box. You know, I mean, if you're coming here and you're you're not having fun, you're not really doing your job. I mean, we we try to make things as fun as possible. We have a good time, and you know, it's it's kind of just we love to just watch the game, and that that's one thing that we all have in common. Uh, one thing I want to ask you, you got the behind the scenes stuff and I kind of asked a couple people and I'd like to get some kind of acknowledgement other than Rick and I to shiver, get massages in between periods. I, I can't answer that. Nobody will answer that legendary question. Ralphie wants to, but we're not here. Ralphie said, I, I, I tell you, he wants to answer every question. He's involved in everything. How's your dealings with Ralphie? How, how do you enjoy working with him? Um, I mean, he's a character. It's enjoyed watching, going back and forth. And I mean, he interacts with the players well, and it's just, it, it's fun to see the different things that he does. Yeah. Uh, one last question for you. As far as um, media relations with the community, how involved have you been with that? Um, and, and do you take a lot of that off of Michelle's plate when you're here? Um, especially, I mean, she put she put me in charge of the Healthy Habits program that she's involved with. I, I work with the Boys and Girls Club as well. So our first job was to go out and talk to the Boys and Girls Club, do some, you know, Healthy Habits programs with them. And then, you know, I, I was in charge of that whole program, and I'm involved in getting the schools involved and trying to get kids to eat healthy and do different healthy habit um, situations. So anything that I can do to help Michelle get involved in the community, you know, is just a plus for me. Well, Chris, thanks for taking a few minutes with us here at Cooley Region Sports Network on the Chill Coaches Show. Thank you. The Chill Coaches Show continues on Cooley Region Sports Network with the one and the only Ralphie, who is going to help Rick and I take a tour of the Chill Locker Room with some of the players. Ralphie, what are we to expect in the Chill Locker Room? It might stink a little. It might stink a little. And uh, if I can smell it, I think he's pretty accurate on that comment. What, what, else, what else goes into all the preparation that you do here in the locker room, Ralphie? What do you do for the guys? Um, I do their water. I bring out their sticks. Um... I just make sure they're all right and keep them like keep them going. You never had to warm any breezers, have you? No. Okay, don't do that. That's probably something you don't want to do. Okay, Ralphie, why don't you lead the way here? We'll come inside. We'll take a look at what's going on here. Right here are the sticks. Right here are the sticks. Um, here is the entryway to the into the locker room. As you can see, you can see all the game jerseys. Um, you can see a TV. <laughs> do you ever do you ever use that TV when you're not supposed to? Sometimes. What what have you watched on there, Ralphie? I can't remember. Have you watched a Christmas story on that TV? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, Ralphie. Now, what what who's your favorite player on the team? Who's the guy that you help out the most? You think? Mac. Mac Jansen, the Mac attack, huh? Yeah. Why? Why is he? Is he very demanding of you, Ralphie? No. He, he's not. Okay. Who? Who is? Is there anybody who you would consider very demanding of your attention? No, not really. Coach. Coach. Yeah. What? What does he ask you to do? He tells me to go get him food for him. Do you ever get a piece of that food at all, Ralphie? Do you ever get to share with Coach? Yes. So, so you feel like you're involved then, right? Kind of. All right. So what else can you show me in here, Ralphie? What else you got? Back here are the showers and the restroom. There's Shiver. Yeah, where, where's Shiver? I can't see. And oh, the there he is. All right, there's Shiver. Does Shiver usually come in and hang out in the locker room, or is this just like a first-time cameo? It's the first time he's been in here. All right. Sounds good. All right, so, R Ralphie, what, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen happen in the chill locker room? I can't mention that. Why, why? Why? Is it like if you tell me you're going to kill me, or what's the deal? Yeah, basically. Oh, he's going to kill me now. Rick, he's been getting sassy. I think what happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. Is that what you're going to tell us? Yes. All right. Well, that's good. He's a team He's a team player, that's for sure, Mr. Ralphie is. So, Ral Ralphie, now, do you, have you ever used this product over here? What is that? It's air, like. What is it? For visors to clean the visors. Oh, okay. Do you use them on your glasses? No. Oh, I just wanted to ask and see if you did. But all right. But it so, smells like oranges. Does it? Do you like oranges? Yes. All right. Hey, have you ever faced a bully with yellow teeth? No. Have you? Do you? Do you drink Ovaltine? No. Well, why not? I don't know. All right. Has anybody ever looked at you and just said, "You'll shoot your eye out, kid"? No. 
does the Omni Center have large icicles that could pierce you and hurt you, and then you would cry about your Red Rider BB gun? No. <laughs> I think that sums it up from the locker room here at the Omni Center. The Cooley Region Show Coaches Show wrap it up here. Thank you for joining us, and look out for the episode very soon on YouTube. Good night, everyone.